Ladies and gentlemen, Tactical Vance here, and welcome to a news update today. Now last week we saw a update on some of the AI technology and some of the AI movements, and we also saw a little snippet as well in ATV. The movement looks really, really smooth. I'm hoping that that movement is going to be implemented into the player movement as well as the AI movement as well because it looks so so smooth so much so that I've never seen a game actually have as smooth animations as that with the character movement it almost looks like a uh, video they've also done some improvements to the AI pathfinding there's some also some video in the background there you can see that keeping in mind that the AI in Star Citizen will dwarf the player base they're going to have to be good, otherwise it's going to fall very short. So I think they're working really hard to get them AI looking really, really good. We've seen some information on the room system and the life support and how it will work between different rooms. Really, really interesting concept. Something that has to be right, particularly if your ship comes under attack. And let's say, for instance, you take some damage on one side. If you vent the oxygen and the airlock is shut or the door is shut, to the left and to the right there needs to be a mechanism in place to say if you open that door something's got to happen you've got to leak oxygen from the room that you've just opened the door from and also there might be vacuum there as well this will not only add a massive gameplay element to piracy attacking ships it also adds quite an interesting element to the repair function as well i thought it'd be pretty cool to be sent down to a particular room to go and repair the venting oxygen all depending on the size of the hole clearly star citizen also demonstrated as well that they have the tools to or still building the tools it's fair to say or still iron them out the ability to link two items together to create a trigger now that's pretty important because in the same scenarios you might have a room on your ship that is leaking oxygen you might want to repair it but to open the door you might have to have the power on Okay, there might be an override, but they can create them triggers if need be to create that functionality. So sort of creating a, a chain effect or a workflow, if you could look at it that way. I was hoping to see the hangar modules to be introduced because they did say quite a while ago that we should be seeing the extended modules for the hangars that will expand out for storage, your living quarters, where you store your items. Nothing on that yet. A little bit of a shame. From what I can see so far, the ship progression looks really, really good. I was expecting to see maybe two ships in 2.6, but looking at what they've got completed, I believe the Caterpillar is nearly finished, the Vanguard Hope Light, and then you've got the Vanguard variant, the Buccaneer, the Herald, and they've just started working on the Cutlass variants. The progression of these ships look quite far on. I'm pretty certain they won't release them all at the same time. We're expecting to see two in the next patch. But we do know one thing, they are saving some bits back as a surprise. Could it be one of these ships or could it be something else? I'm not 100% certain. Now looking back in the past, I think the original plan is after the Caterpillar was done, they were going to start working on the Karak. Going to be a way down the line, isn't it? I know that. But Lisa started working on it, it's the main thing. Something else I thought I'd mention as well, at the CitizenCon demo, Star Citizen have released the specs of the PC that they use. I'll read them out to you. Asus X99 motherboard, Asus 1080 GPU, an i7-5820, 64GB of RAM, and a Corsair H55 cooler, and it had an Intel SSD 750, a 1.2TB PCI Express hard drive. Pretty serious PC, but it was running at a good frame rate pretty much the most of the time, over 60. Yeah, I agree, that is pretty uh, serious PC. It's not to be sniffed at by any means, but it does highlight some of the fundamental issues we're experiencing right now have been ironed out in that build. We had a quick glimpse as well at the first images or the work in progress of the bearing missile racks. I'll put a picture in here so you can take a look at that as well. We've also had an update on the PBR technology that Star Citizen have implemented into the game. I did make a video on this quite a while ago. I'll leave a link in the description so you can check that out. It has progressed a lot more now. They've also done quite a bit of work as well on the shadows and they've showed some before and afters of the shadow technology as well. This would also help with uh, night shadows as well. Playing it at night in some games, as you probably know, can be either totally impossible without a torch or you rely on moonlight that gives yourself a good reflection enough to play the game and still make it enjoyable. We've had a quick glimpse at the redesign of the front end for Star Citizen as well. Obviously now that we're going to have 
have Star Marine come into play that the front end needed to be redesigned so that you could select the game mode. The button has been there in the past, but like I said, I think it did need a bit of a redesign. You can see some images in the background now of what that's possibly going to look like. That was an early concept. I don't know if that's going to be final or not. We'll have to wait and see. Finally, on the agenda today, guys, if you're looking to join a Star Citizen organization, check out the a link in the description below. So that's it from me, guys. Thanks for listening, and don't forget to subscribe. Bye now.